It's been 85 years since the United States of America declared its independence from the British Empire. The year was 1861 and there was an irreconcilable issue between the states of the Union, the issue of slavery. And it led to the fragmentation of the country and the outbreak of a full-blown civil war. Four years and hundreds of thousands of deaths later, the issue was settled. The country would become whole again, but the legacy of the war left a deep scar that some might say persists to this day. Today we'll try to shed some light on the American Civil War. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. The elections of 1860 pitted the Republican Party candidate Abraham Lincoln against not one, but two Democrat candidates. Stephen Douglas and John C. Breckinridge. Breckinridge was a pro-slavery candidate nominated by the Southern Democrats. Lincoln, however, had an anti-slavery stance and was especially against the expansion of slavery into newly acquired western lands after the Mexican-American War. He won in all but one of the northern states where slavery was already abolished and became the 16th President of the United States. The elections were held on November 6 and had an immediate impact. On December 20, South Carolina voted to secede from the Union. Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana and Texas followed suit in the next two months. They banded together and formed the Confederate States of America. Virginia, Arkansas, Tennessee and North Carolina joined this new Union. But the United States did not recognize these secessions and declared them illegal. On April 12, 1861, Confederate troops attacked and conquered Fort Sumter, a federal property in Charleston, South Carolina. President Abraham Lincoln called on all states to send forces to recapture the fort. The war had just begun. So what happened? How did it come to this? There are no exact answers, of course, but the war wasn't exactly a surprise to anyone. There was an escalating political tension throughout the country that started decades earlier but intensified in the 1850s. But I think it's safe to say that slavery was at the heart of the problem. And this issue goes back, all the way back to the early days of the Union. The 1787 Constitutional Convention, which sought to define how the country will be run, already had the problem of slavery coming up. At that time, slavery was present in all 13 states, but 90% of all slaves lived in the South, an agrarian region that heavily depended on the institution of owning people. So even back then, Southern delegates were unwilling to accept any proposal that would threaten slavery and would actually refuse to join the Union if slavery was not to be allowed. The issue wasn't really solved, but it was basically agreed that the Union states could tolerate slavery. And so, some states kept the institution while others banned it. But in the following decades, things got more complicated. There were long debates regarding the powers of the states and the federal powers, the dilemma of owning people, which makes them a property, and the right to own property was guaranteed by the Constitution. But as we know, the US expanded soon after its foundation, and the admittance of new territories as states with full rights complicated things even further. Because new states where slavery is abolished tip the balance in favor of the anti-slavery side, putting slave states in a clear disadvantage and getting the northern states closer to a majority that would allow them to abolish slavery on a federal level. A major milestone in this regard was the so-called Missouri Compromise that you probably heard of but know nothing about. It occurred in March 1820 and this is the short version of what it meant. Missouri submitted its request to join the Union, but Republican representatives wanted to impose restrictions on slavery. That, however, was a federal matter and the Constitution allowed states to regulate slavery, not the Federation. In addition, if Missouri was to be a slave state, it would tip the balance in favor of the South. Then, Maine submitted its request to join the Union, so a compromise was made. Missouri would become a slave state in the Union, while Maine was to be a free state. 
and as an added compromise, none of the territories of the Louisiana Purchase north of the 36th parallel would be allowed to legalize slavery. This practically divided the country on an actual line and is now regarded as an act that both delayed and sowed the seeds of the Civil War. Thomas Jefferson predicted the line it had drawn would someday tear the Union apart. Forty years later, the North and South would split closely along the 36th parallel and fight for four bloody years. At first, President Lincoln had no intent to invade the South, nor did he want to end slavery where it already existed. But he said that he would use force to maintain possession of federal property. So when Southern troops attacked and took Fort Sumter, the President had to act. What was he up against? The South was home to some 9 million people, 3.5 million of which were slaves. Slaves were of course not permitted to handle guns, so they couldn't be drafted into the army. But the South also had some good generals that knew how to command an army. The North, on the other hand, had a population of 22 million people and access to more resources. Simplified, the Confederation's strategy was to defend itself from attacks and seek independence. The Union's strategy was to reunite the country and expel the rebels. These simplified explanations might not sound so horrific, but the actual war was brutal in every sense of the word. Both sides regularly called for volunteers, but they were insufficient. So both the North and the South started to draft men into the army, and boy did that get out of hand quickly. By the end of the war, 50% of all men in the Union had been drafted into the army. And in the South, 75% of all men, um, white men, became Confederate soldiers. To be fair, the vast majority of Union soldiers were also white, at least in the beginning. But from 1863, after the Emancipation Proclamation, freed slaves were allowed to join the army, and 200,000 of them did. All of these men fought for four years in 237 major battles and many more minor skirmishes. These battles were bitterly fought and the war itself became one of the most ferocious ever fought to that point. In some cases, the war devolved so much that battles had no geographic objectives and the only targets for each side were the enemy's soldiers. Despite being at a disadvantage, the Confederation managed to obtain some major victories, thanks to its good commanders. The first battle of Bull Run in 1861 was the first major battle of the war. It was a Confederate victory, followed by a disorganized retreat of the Union forces. There was also a second battle of Bull Run one year later and the Confederates won again. But the decisive moment of the war was the famous Battle of Gettysburg. In 1863, Confederate General Robert E. Lee's incursion into the North was stopped in Pennsylvania. The battle lasted for three days and it involved the largest number of casualties of the entire war. Between 46,000 and 51,000 soldiers from both armies were casualties, the most costly in US history. At the same time, in the West, General Ulysses S. Grant besieged Vicksburg in Mississippi and won, isolating Arkansas, Louisiana and Texas from the rest of the Confederation. It was all downhill from here for the South. Georgia, North Carolina and South Carolina were falling into the Union's hands and in Virginia, Grant's victories reduced the Confederation Army to a mere 6,000. The war effectively ended on April 9, 1865, when Confederate General Lee surrendered to Union General Grant at Appomattox Courthouse. At the end of the war, much of the South's infrastructure was destroyed, especially its railroads. And that's important, because the American Civil War is considered to be the first modern technologic war. Both soldiers and supplies were carried to the front by train, Communication was handled mostly by the telegraph. Dreadnoughts or ironclad warships, which were steam-powered, were used on a large scale in a war for the first time. And war correspondents photographed and shared war stories in daily newspapers. But the cost of this techno-war was immense. The number of deaths on both sides are estimated between 620,000 and 1 million. 
the number of injured was close to 400,000. The major outcome of the war, aside from reuniting the country, was the emancipation or liberation of slaves. As I said, at first Lincoln's goals were not to abolish slavery. However, as the war dragged on, it became clear that slavery was the central factor of the conflict. Lincoln and his cabinet made ending slavery a war goal, which culminated in the Emancipation Proclamation. He did not, however, live to see the full effects of this. He died on April 15, 1865, after being shot by Confederate sympathizer John Wilkes Booth at Ford's Theatre in Washington, D.C. The Emancipation Proclamation of 1862 stated that all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. It also said that the military and naval authority thereof will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons and will do no acts to repress such persons. In 1865, the proclamation became the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution. The next amendment gave former slaves American citizenship and the 15th gave them the right to vote. But while these claims became law, for a long time they were enforced only on paper, especially in the South. White supremacy, discrimination and racial segregation were the nationwide norm for a long time. And the war and the issues that led to it have left an impression that marks this nation to this day. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.